Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. Today, we're going to be discussing the four founders of Hogwarts, the group of 10th century witches and wizards responsible for creating the finest school of witchcraft and wizardry the world has ever seen. These witches wizards were Godric Gryffindor, Salazar Slytherin, Rowena Ravenclaw, and Helga Hufflepuff. Specifically, we're going to be tackling the question of why these four founders weren't immortalized in some way. The primary purpose of wizarding portraits in the wizarding world is to preserve the memory of a person long after they have passed away. This ensures that their knowledge and wisdom can be passed down to future generations. But unlike muggle portraits or photographs, which merely capture a still image, wizarding portraits can be animated to capture the essence of a person's personality. Often, portraits are enchanted to mimic the behavior and mannerisms of the portrait subject. But there are many different types of portraits and animated images in the wizarding world, so before we move forward any further, I need to quickly summarize each type. This will allow us to decide which type would have fit the founders best. Types of Magical Imagery Moving photographs are a type of magical photograph that appear to come to life and show a brief snippet of motion. Unlike muggle photographs, which are static and unchanging, moving photographs are enchanted to display a movement or action that's then often repeated over and over again in a loop. This type of photograph can be found throughout the wizarding world, including in the homes of wizarding families, the offices of the Daily Prophet, and even in Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. They are often used as a means of communication or as a way to capture and remember important events or moments in time. One of the most famous examples of moving photographs in the Harry Potter series is the Daily Prophet, which features moving photographs of the news stories and events it covers. These photographs often add an extra layer of depth and detail to the stories they depict, as they show the actions and expressions of the people involved in the events. This type of magical imagery is most similar to what we have in the Muggle world, and is in no way interactive or lively. Regular Portraits the bulk of the portraits in Harry Potter are painted by witch or wizard artists who have used enchantments in their paint to enable their subjects to be able to move and interact with the living. This style of portrait accounts for most of the portraits that hang throughout Hogwarts Castle. It's important to note, however, that most of the portraits hanging around the school are what JK Rowling has referred to as two-dimensional, meaning they can interact with the living but only in a very limited way. Regardless, these portraits still have a number of abilities, including the ability to move from frame to frame, even frames that belong to another subject, granting access to secret passageways, and holding surface level conversations. These interactions provide them with the opportunity to make use of the phrases and mannerisms that they were known for while alive. However, they cannot offer quality advice or contribute to in-depth conversations. This brings us to our next level of portrait. Headmaster's Portraits Headmaster's portraits are far and above the most advanced form of magical imagery. While at first glance they may appear to resemble the aforementioned portraits, the difference is that Headmaster's portraits are much more intelligent, able to engage in far more complex conversations and encounters. Essentially, these portraits are capable of complex thought and critical thinking, which makes them appear much more lifelike. According to JK Rowling, the type of portrait typically corresponds to the power and abilities of the witch or wizard who was featured in the painting. This suggests that the more powerful a witch or wizard was in life, the more lifelike their portrait stands to be. This would explain why Dumbledore's headmaster portrait is so capable of in-depth conversation, advising Severus from his frame well after his death. Dumbledore was one of the most powerful wizards to have ever lived, so it stands to reason that his portrait would have been one of the most sentient. But there is actually more to it than that. As it turns out, Headmaster's portraits are painted well before their deaths, kept away in hidden locations where only their living counterparts are able to interact with them. The subjects would then visit their paintings as often as possible, imparting memories and wisdom onto them basically teaching the paintings how to be them. Through this process, they are able to become very good representations of these witches and wizards. However, it is also important to remember that they cannot grow or learn from future interactions or events 
in the same way that someone like a ghost could. Rather, the headteacher portraits are more like the sentient memoir of each professor, able to respond and provide advice to people based on the memories and wisdom imparted onto them before the real witch or wizard died. Hogwarts headmasters are an integral part of Hogwarts history, and so it makes sense that their portraits would be immortalised in this very special way. However, I would argue that the Hogwarts founders are an even more important part of the school's history. So the question remains, why didn't they get portraits? Why weren't they immortalised? I think the founders portraits would fit just perfectly at the entrance to each common room, or perhaps even in a row overlooking the great hall. It also occurred to me that the portraits of the founders could potentially aid in the sorting ceremony. I've got a few theories. 1. They didn't want portraits, didn't bother. It's entirely possible that, even though they deserved them, the founders of Hogwarts simply didn't want their portraits to be displayed. This could have been for any number of reasons, though I suspect that it could be linked with concerns pertaining to how their legacy may be portrayed by future generations. It's also possible that the founders may have had a disagreement or a falling out before they died, resulting in them not wanting their portraits to be displayed together. It's also just possible that they simply didn't bother making portraits because they had other things to do. These four witches and wizards were focused on establishing the groundwork for the finest institution of witchcraft and wizardry in the world, so I'm sure that they had more than enough on their plates already. 2. They were too humble this one sort of ties into the last point, and it explores the idea that the founders shied away from portraits due to humbleness. Their names were already on the four Hogwarts houses, so it's entirely possible that the founders may have viewed portraits as a step too far. Perhaps they avoided them as to not appear egotistical or self-absorbed. Additionally, I suspect that they may have also been aware of the fact that if their portraits were hanging in the halls, then their presence may have overshadowed the current headmistress or headmaster. 3. They exist in a hidden location It's entirely possible that the founders' portraits do actually exist, they're just hidden off in some secret compartment within the school. Hogwarts is riddled with secret rooms and chambers, so to me this idea is not too far-fetched. 4. They didn't have the knowledge Another possibility is that the founders of Hogwarts did not have the same level of magical knowledge as later generations and were unable to create their own portraits. Sure, they were incredibly powerful, but it's entirely possible that the creation of magical portraits is a more recent development. 5. They were destroyed, lost It's entirely possible that at one time, the founders did in fact have their own portraits, but that over the course of time, these portraits became damaged or lost. Hogwarts has been around for over a thousand years, which presents an awful lot of opportunities for things to go missing, get damaged. 6. Dark Intent Another reason that the founders may have opted not to have portraits is that they may have been concerned about the potential for their portraits to be used for dark magic. In the wizarding world, portraits can sometimes have a life of their own and can be manipulated by others. Perhaps the founders did not want to risk their portraits being used for nefarious purposes, and as a result, chose not to create them. And that's it for this video. Do you want more videos covering the Hogwarts portraits? Something else? Do you agree with my theories? Leave a comment down below. Until next time, remember, it does not do to dwell on dreams, and forget to live.